In this video, we'll look at solving quadratic trig equations. So the equation given is 12 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 6 equals 0. And some people will look at that and have no idea where to start. It can be confusing because there's a lot to do and not necessarily clear what to do. So my favorite thing to do is right away start by substitution and say, you know what, let's call sine theta A. So let A equal sine theta. Why is that good? Because then this is just 12 sine squared theta, which is the same as sine theta squared, which means this is just 12a squared. See that? Sine theta squared? So that's just the same as call sine theta a. That's just a squared. Sine theta is a, so that's just plus a minus 6 equals 0. Now we have a nice quadratic. When you're solving quadratics, there's different ways to solve this. One method is chart method, another is decomposition. I'm going to demonstrate chart method. If you prefer decomposition, you can watch the video on that. Although it would help if you already knew the video on chart method, or at least how to do it. So, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to multiply to this times this, A times C. So I'm trying to multiply to negative 72. And I'm trying to add to the coefficient here, which is just a 1. So what are my two numbers? And again, there's different ways you can go about figuring that out. It might be guess and check, but I know I have to have a positive and a negative because it multiplies to a negative, which means I need a plus and a minus. And then through some trial and error in my head, I see that's going to be positive 9 and negative 8 because positive 9 times negative 8 multiplies to negative 72, but they add to 1. I get 12a squared in the center, that's where it goes. Again, watch the video on chart method if you don't know that also, for example, the negative 6 goes here. And then we'll put the 9a's here and then negative 8a's here. And now we common factor rows and columns. Let's start with this row, say. What goes into 12 that goes into 9? A 3. And what goes into a squared that goes into a? An a. And now we common factor this column what goes into 12 that goes into negative 8? A 4. And these have to multiply to be 12. What goes into the a squared and the a? An a. And so again, you see, these two things have to multiply to this. Now, how do I fill in this spot? I like to use like a target analogy. Is This and this have to target to here. Those two have to multiply to 9a. So the real question is, what times 3a makes 9a? The answer, of course, is 3. 3 times 3a, 9a. This and this one have to target the negative 8a. So what times something here makes negative 8a? The answer is negative 2. Because negative 2 times 4 makes negative 8. So negative 2 times 4a is negative 8a. And you can check if you've done it right. This times this have to target negative 6. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. That's good. So we factored this top row and this leftmost column are our factor results. We'll put them here and we get this. So if you remember this skill, if you have two brackets equal zero, either or the first bracket equals zero or the second bracket equals zero. Put a little line here and now take this plus three to the other side by subtracting three both sides and you get 4a equals negative 3, and when you're timesing by 4, to get rid of it you divide by 4, so a is negative 3 quarters. And on this one, let's change the minus 2 to the other side by adding 2 both sides, and you get 3a equals 2. 3 times a, we want to undo that, it's the opposite of times, divide, so divide by 3, and we get a is 2 thirds. But remember, it's not really a, it's a substitution a was sine theta. So really, it's sine theta equaling negative 3 quarters, and sine theta equals 2 thirds. We have two cases here. That's going to be two sets of solutions. One from sine theta can be negative 3 quarters, that's totally valid, or sine the theta can be positive 2 thirds. Either one's good. Let's call this case 1 and this case 2. And I'm going to work with both over here. So I'll rewrite it over here. This is case 1. Sine theta is negative 3 quarters. Let's do 
this one first, and then we'll come back to case two. This is case one. So where is sine negative? Let's draw a sketch. Some important things on your sketch is to make sure to label the axes with arrows and an X and a Y. And where is sine negative? Remember your cast rule. Sine is positive in these two, but it's negative in quadrant three and in quadrant four. Make sure to draw an initial arm, clearly visible, that says start from here and rotate. Here's one of your thetas, theta one. And here's the second theta, theta two. And let's call the related acute angle, the angle to the x-axis, beta. I'm sneaking a beta in there and in there. So we've sketched it. Let's solve the related acute angle. So we're going to do the sine of beta. That is the sine inside as if this were a triangle. And since we're pretending it's a triangle, we're using this positive angle inside a triangle, not a rotation, just right in here. That means that we're going to use the positive version of 3 quarters. How do you solve this? Well, to get sine off of B, you do inverse sine. So what is the inverse sine of 3 quarters? I'm going to use my calculator. Make sure your calculator is in radians. I see a little R here, so I know I'm good. What is the inverse sine, shift sine, of 3 divided by 4? And that gives me a radian answer of approximately 0 0.848. Great, but that's just the related acute angle, the angle inside this triangle. To calculate the actual rotation, theta 1, since I'm in quadrant 3, quadrant 3 always has the same recipe, that is go 180 degrees or pi and add on beta. So it's pi plus 0 0.848, which is approximately What's pi? So shift. That gives me my pi plus 0.848. And I get approximately 3.9. And I got to round up here. This 5 means round up. So it's 3.990. Okay? And that's approximate because I had to round off this thing that came from pi. But I have another possible answer. That's theta 2. Theta 2 is in quadrant. Four. Quadrant 4 is always take the full rotation and come back pi. I'm sorry, take the full rotation and come back beta. That didn't make sense. Take the full rotation to pi and subtract off this little bit of beta and you'll have that rotation. So it's 2 pi minus 0 0.848. Again, I'll use my calculator. What's pi times 2? Take away 0 0.848. You get 5 0.435. So I've got two answers. You can put them in a box if you want. Those two rotations solve the original equation. But I have a whole other case to consider. Case two, what if sine theta equals two thirds? Equally as valid answers. So I'm going to need another sketch. And I'm going to want to draw my arrows and my X and Y again, an initial arm, so I don't forget it, clearly visible. Where is sine positive? Well, sine was negative here and here. It's positive in quadrant one and positive in quadrant two. We've already used theta one, theta two, so I'll call this rotation theta three, and I'll call this rotation theta four. And again, related acute angles in here, let's call them beta. Maybe we'll give them another name because they already kind of use beta here. I'll call them beta 2s. These are beta 2s. So the related acute angle in this case is solving for the sine of second related acute angle, beta 2, where it equals 2 thirds. You always make your related acute angle positive, but it already is. Last time it wasn't. We had to make it positive. Here it's already positive. We do the same as last time, inverse sine on 2 thirds. Get out your calculators. Never hurts to check to make sure it's in radians just in case you haven't checked so far. What's the second sign or inverse sign of two divided by three? The answer is the second related acute angle is approximately 0 0.730. I usually round to three decimal places, so I write 0 0.730 to show I rounded to three decimals. But that's just the related acute angle. I need the rotation, which I called theta three. In quadrant one though, good news, the rotation, theta 3, is the exact same as beta. It's the same angle 
rotating to here as it is between this line and the x-axis. So theta 3 is just 0 0.730. And then finally, what's theta 4? Well, we got to do quadrant 2 stuff. In quadrant 2, it's always pi take away the related acute angle, 0 0.730. So I get pi take away 0 0.730, and I get approximately 2.412. I have to round because of this 5. And I have to round anyway because it's a lot of decimals, which I noticed, that's why I paused earlier, I forgot a rounding dot here. It's not too late, it's why I like when you check over your work. So here's another two answers. So I have four possible answers here, and they came from the fact that when I factored, I had two brackets that gave me two equations for sine, both of which I've solved, and now I have solved completely this quadratic trig equation.